Hi everybody, Julie Garvin Riggs here at the Hartman Education Center. We've had a lot of requests for some online painting classes. So I'm here in the studio today to give you a demonstration. It's how to land a landscape 101 for abject beginners and for those of you who haven't been in touch with your grade school artist in a long time, this will get you reconnected with how to make a painting and hopefully you'll absolutely find that joy again. So I'm gonna put down my super brush and uh, talk to you about, this is our basic teaching painting here at the museum. This is when we have classes of children and adult groups that want to come and paint on plein air outside by our beautiful river landscape. We talk about this painting first. This was done over a hundred years ago down at the river in the fall. It's a beautiful example of an impressionistic landscape. And it is a really wonderful painting to teach from. What we've done to simplify this for those of you that are beginners is broken it down into steps. Where to start and where to finish. Super important to know those both things and then you can take care of everything else in the middle. Um, this is the river scene and the way that we teach how to make this scene is step by step. So I'm going to open this up and give you a look at how we put this together. Most beginners, if they haven't painted before and if they hadn't painted outside before, don't know where to start. We always, always, always start with the thing farthest away from us in our vision when we're painting outside. And all day, every day, it's the sky. So you always want to start at the top of your canvas with the sky, putting in that layer of sky. We usually go 50% on that layer, bringing it down to halfway, because we're gonna put some trees over that. And if you look outside your window, you'll see that you can always see a little bit of the sky in between the leaves of a tree. We paint top to bottom, back to front, getting closer to ourselves with every layer. It's very important to paint that way instead of painting your foreground first, and I'm gonna show you why. This painting was done by a much younger child. However, they put their tree in first, which was in their foreground. Then they had to paint their sky in between all the branches of that tree and put their grass in and make it look like it was in the distance. What you get when you paint front to back is a one-dimensional, very flat painting. And as you can see, they had a really hard time getting that cloud and sky background in between the tree branches. So for that reason, we teach how to lay in a landscape in the opposite way. We start with the thing farthest away, which is the sky. Go down 50%. The next layer in front of that sky, getting closer to us, are the trees that exist across the river and they bump up into the sky. So it's not a, you know, one tree at a time painting the sky between all of those trees. There are thousands of trees across the river. So the easiest way to accomplish that is to make a solid bank of trees that bumps up into the sky. Then later in our different layers, we'll be able to individualize a few of those and it will look realistic. The tree line across the river comes down into the marsh grass that's over there. It's a really beautiful salt marsh. So the, the, you start with your sky, then your tree line, then your marsh grass. After the marsh grass, there's a little bit of river bank there, and then the river. The river uh, cuts across almost to the bottom, and at the very bottom of this painting, we have our layer of grass, the grass that we're actually sitting on to make this painting. So we've painted top, to bottom, back to front to get where we are. You've noticed we haven't uh, added any of the trees on our side of the river, and that's because if we painted them first, we'd run into that same problem that that artist did, and we'd have to fill in all the background. So super important to get your background in before you add anything in the foreground. I'm gonna close this again and show you what that looks like when it's all put together. So we know that this artist, Fred Longacre, 
put this together in the way I just described to you. The sky was put in first, then the bank of trees that come right below that. Then that goes down into the marsh grass and the river. The river comes down to the grass at the very bottom. And at that point, the artist went in and added all of the vertical trees that come up and block out some of the background. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous impressionistic uh, painting. It's impressionistic because the brush strokes, as you will see, are very pixelated and very loose, not super, super photographic, but kind of blurry. Uh, that's the hallmark of impressionism, is to have something be sort of out of focus when you're up close, and it sort of pulls into focus the farther away you get from it. So we're gonna paint this painting as a total beginner, step by step, all right? We're gonna start with our sky. I have my palette here with the primary colors plus white. This is what you'll need to make any landscape painting. Uh, you'll start with acrylic paints, the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and then white to make all your secondary and tertiary colors, all right? Pretty easy, this is just grade school acrylic paint, very thick, water soluble. We're not gonna use a lot of water today because if you're painting on canvas, canvas does not like water. That's why they make raincoats and tarps out of it. It sort of repels water. So you're gonna wanna just use the water for cleaning your brushes. That's real important to clean your brushes between painting or else you're gonna muddy up all of this on your palette, okay? So we're gonna start with a large flat brush. When we paint big areas of solid color like a sky, you want to use a big brush to get in that big area or else you're going to be there for a really long time. So this makes it a little quicker. I'm mixing some blue and white together so I get a really nice light blue for my background sky. You can paint vertically or horizontally up to you, whether you want a lot of sky, which would be a vertical painting. You could put your horizon line anywhere you want with that. If you really like doing sky, I would suggest that. If you're more interested in getting in all of your layers, I would start with horizontal because you're going to have a little longer area and maybe a 50-50 with your sky. So I'm going to get in here and I'm going to, I'm going to paint vertically, like the painting behind me, so you can see. The greatest thing about doing your background layers is there's no detail in them. You're gonna get them in really quickly. With a big, wide brush, I get my sky in first. And I'm being very haphazard about where I'm painting. I'm not being overly cautious because it's just a flat background layer. I'm gonna take it down to about here. I'm not gonna go all the way. Okay, so I've got my blue in. I'm not using a ton of paint. I, I'm using kind of a thin layer because I want it to dry quickly as I overlap my layers. Now, while your blue is still wet, you're gonna wanna add your clouds if you want clouds in the top. It makes it a lot easier to blend them in if the background is still wet. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of white again kind of haphazardly where I want it to be and then I'm going to blend that out a little bit. You know when the wind is blowing and you've got big clouds up there and it blows them out you can tell when it's very windy up in the sky when the clouds get blown out like that. I just want a little bit of that background. Now one of the great things to use when you're making clouds, my mom taught me this as a kid, is to squish up a piece of paper towel. Really squeeze it up. Dip it in your paint. And that, can you can go in and make some pretty authentic looking clouds in your sky, depending on how thick you wanna put this on. You just sort of blend it and move it around. It'll give you a little bit of guidance for where you're gonna do some of your brush strokes in the sky. I just want to make it sort of translucent so I'm not overworking it too much. I just want it to look loose like that. The next layer that we're going to work on is our tree line and you want to mix up blue and yellow 
blue and yellow to get a convincing green. And when you're working with acrylic paints, we paint dark to light. You're gonna add your dark features first, your dark areas of your painting, and then we're gonna go on top of that and add some lighter colors. It's gonna give you a real authentic look. You're gonna get light and shadow. There's always light and shadow, um, depending on where the sun is, where your light source is. So I'm starting with a, a darker green because I'm gonna add lighter shades. So that requires more blue and a little bit of yellow till you get to this dark shade. I'm going to quickly put my tree line in. As I said before, the tree line bumps up into the sky. And I'm doing it as a solid bank of trees. I'm putting the line in as a guideline to how far down I want to go with my trees. And now I can really quickly fill that in. Again, we're not taking a lot of time with our background layers because they don't have a lot of details in them. You want to get these in rather quickly so you have time to do all the fun stuff, which are the details that really make a painting more interesting. So again, getting in here quickly, bumping up with my brush. Just want that saturated dark color side to side is the best movement when you're painting and you're doing a background that you want to be seamless. All right. So we've got, got our tree line back here. Again, doesn't look like much right now, but when we work on it, we'll go back and do our details. You'll get it. So this is a kind of a tricky color. The next color to make is our marsh grass color. And it helps to know what you're gonna mix. So I'm gonna use some of this green that we just mixed and I'm gonna use some of this white that we just mixed. I'm gonna pull in some yellow. Get sort of a lime green there, that's okay. Add a little more yellow to that. And then we're gonna add a teeny tiny bit of red. That will change that color pretty quickly to like a brownish, tannish, khaki color. Marsh is a lot of colors in the spring. It's got some lime green in it. It's got some khaki in it. It's got some white in it, some pink in it. But our real goal here is to get a brownish, yeah, right there, that tan color, okay? Got that on my brush. I'm gonna make my bottom line for my marsh grass just going across so I know where I'm going. I'm gonna fill that in a little bit. Again, very quickly. Don't overthink it. This is just a quick foundation. We're gonna do so many things in the later part of our painting to make it really look real. So there's sort of a darker background on top of that, I'm gonna mix a lighter shade of that color so we get some of the other shades going into this. It's not just a flat color as we know. I have a flat brush, a little square. It's important to know that when you're painting, which direction you paint in will make a difference. Now, if I paint it pulling down this way, I'm gonna pull down the dark green. So what I want to do is take my brush and have it on its side and go up. Go up with my color up into that darker background like that. This is flattening out the brush a little bit, so I'm going to get a smaller brush eventually. But I want to start layering different shades of color on top of each other into my marsh grass just to build up a little character, a little density, a little interest, so it won't be so boring in one colored. So now I've got another color in here. I added a little bit of red to that, got a little pink going, and I'm just layering this in. As you can see, it's starting to build up a little bit, and you would just continue doing that with different shades of color going up. Now this is a very beginner's way to paint so it's a good way to practice layering things getting them in there going up with your brush strokes 
I'm going to stop with that layer for now because we're going to go on to the next layer. I'm going to let that dry a little so that when I go back in with other colors, it's going to really look like we're building it up. So my next layer is a little bit of the riverbank where the mud of the marsh meets the water. And that's going to be like a rust colored brown. So to make that, brown is a tricky color to make one of the trickiest because you're using three different colors to make it and each of those colors are very very differently powered red is very bossy and takes over right away blue is very very dark and yellow being the lightest can't compete so how you make uh, brown is kind of important the steps that you take what we do here is we start with orange we got some red and a bunch of yellow So you want to get like a light pumpkin-y orange first. Then you're going to pull in a tiny bit of blue. And it's going to change immediately. Just the tiniest bit of blue brings it to brown. This is sort of an orangey brown, which is perfect for mud and a riverbank. We're going to add that now. A lot of people, when they're making brown, get purple. And if you get purple, it means you have too much red and blue and you need to add some yellow. A lot of people will get green, and that means you have too much yellow and blue and you'll need to add a little red. So you can adjust. So I'm gonna put that right at the base of our marsh grass. Okay, just gonna leave that there. And now I need to add my river. Sometimes the river really doesn't look blue. It's brown, it's green, it reflects the sky, but it's got a lot of white in it. Sometimes it's purple. I prefer to use a little bit of lavender when painting my river. So I'm gonna add a little more blue to that purpley color I had on my palette, and it'll give me a little bit of a silvery purple look to my river. Again, just getting it in very quickly. This is an easy painting to make because it's linear. Every single layer of this horizon is a line that goes from left to right. If you had, if you were doing the up view, uh, up river view, where it hooks around and winds, it's a lot harder. This is your basic 101 for the beginner. So a linear painting side to side is much easier to do than changing your vantage point. So this is a good place to start if you haven't made a landscape painting before. I'm gonna leave my river right now and I'm just gonna paint the grass in my foreground, which would be the grass I would be sitting on as the artist when I was making this. So for grass, you're gonna want yellow and blue, but you're gonna need a lot more yellow than blue because you want it to be that nice sort of springtime bright green. All right, so got a bunch of that on my brush. We're gonna put that in again, side to side. Normally I'd be working on an easel with a bigger canvas, but for today, holding it is just fine. Again, putting it in quickly, no detail. All right, we have gone top to bottom, back to front. We've got all of our background basic layers in. If we wanted to be really brave and paint the trees on our side of the river, now is the time to do that. Got our background in. I think I wanna put a tree up on one side or the other. I'm not going to do all of those trees, but we need a little something, a vertical interest that breaks up all of this background horizon because it's kind of boring uh, as it is this way. So we can throw up a tree in our foreground. Again, we're going to need to mix some brown. I'll show you how to do that again because it's very tricky. 
I have that light brown right here that I used for the riverbank. I'm gonna be adding some more red to that and some blue to that to make it a little bit darker. I want it to be tree brown. So it really looks like the trunk of a tree. All right, I've got my brown and I'm just going to rough in my tree trunk. I want it to come maybe from this side. So I'm going to start, I always start with my branches because then you know where to put the trunk. So I'm very lightly going to put in some verticals like so. And then I know where my trunk has to come. It's got to come down here. Another branch off that way. I'm just sort of very loosely putting it in right now. Okay, a little bit of my, that's the way, it gives you your guideline. You have a map now for your tree. Once you get your guideline of your tree in there, you're gonna fill that in with more of that brown. Have a really convincing looking trunk there that comes down into your foreground fill in those branch areas. Again, we're doing it very loosely. We're not making a photographic painting. We're making sort of a, a loose impressionistic painting. All right, so that helps to break up all of that vertical there. You can then get in there and impressionistically put in your leaves. You usually wanna start with your darkest color. Let's imagine that this is fall, like it is behind us. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of a darker purple. And Impressionism is really fun. Uh, it's just a series of dots, slashes, very quick background lines. Don't overthink it, just enjoy it, have fun. It's meant to look a little loose and not photographic. So I've got my dark, sort of my dark fall leaves in there. I'm now gonna add some yellow to that color so I have a lighter, lighter brown. I'm gonna put some of that in among. I don't wanna cover the dark areas. I'm gonna to add to them. So you wanna sort of paint around them when you're doing this. All right. Now for another color. We're just gonna keep getting lighter as we're going. I'm gonna get some, hopefully, bright orange, pumpkin-y or a little darker. Love that color. I'm gonna put some of that on now in some of these areas. Very basic, just here and there. Again, this isn't supposed to look like Norman Rockwell. It's just supposed to be loose and fun at this point. You're learning how to layer. You're learning how to use your brush and get it in there. It's more, more like a kaleidoscope is what you're gonna end up with, that kaleidoscope pixelated look as we're filling our tree. I'm, I'm gonna go right for yellow now and just make that my last, my last color. Not overthinking it, just getting in there. You wanna just practice doing this because you wanna be able to have fearless brush strokes, not worry about where it's going and what it's looking like. This is how you learn to paint, how you begin. You just get in there and you do it. And you learn more and more each time you paint. So I'm not being picky, I'm not being too careful, I'm just getting it in there and learning how to use my brush, okay? Now I would go back and back and back maybe 10 more times to fill this up, but you guys would be asleep by that time. So we're gonna stop there. What I would do if I were you at home, I would go back up into your dark trees in the back and add lighter shades. Remember we're painting dark to light. And if the sun, let's imagine the sun is up here in the sky overhead, then your lightest areas of your trees would be at the top and get a little bit of that color in there, just a little. And keep doing that, keep layering. Then you go down and add that lighter color into your marsh. 
The more times you go back in with a brush, the more interesting it's gonna be. You can get 10, 12, 15 layers in there going up like that. If you want movement in your river, water is always moving. You can add some white in a straight path like that. So it looks like it's moving. You can add little, little dashes, stippling, however you want your water to look or how fast or slow you want your water to be. Again, I'm not overthinking this. I'm just going in there, all right? If you want some depth in your foreground, which is the area closest to you in your grass, you're gonna add some vertical grasses. Again, I'm not overthinking. I'm painting very quick to give you an idea of how to do this. Again, you would just layer it and layer it and layer it and keep going back, okay? So that is how to land a landscape 101, painting top to bottom, back to front, layer by layer, and then going back repeatedly with your details until you build it up into a painting that has a lot of movement and a lot of different shades of colors. It has depth, it has foreground, the area closest to you. It has middle ground and it has background. It has dimension. There's a big difference between these two paintings. I hope you can see that. Uh, I hope you enjoy painting landscapes. Uh, any, anytime you paint on plein air outside, bottom line is always, always, always start with the sky and work your way to where you are. Paint to yourself, top to bottom, back to front. Now, if you don't have canvas board at home, people paint on shingles, people paint on pieces of plexiglass, people paint on paper plates or wooden pallets. You can also order canvas online. There are some local stores that are fantastic. Jerry's Artorama, you can Google that. Dick Blick, fantastic. They sell to the general public. The prices are very fair and they'll ship it to your house. You're gonna need the primary colors plus white, which are red, yellow, blue, and white. To make any painting you need to paint, you'll get all your colors out of those primary colors. Remember, canvas doesn't love water. Use the water to wash your brushes and then dry them off in between. Uh, happy painting. It's been a pleasure being back in the studio. Take care, stay home, stay safe. All for now.